I was born just before the beginning of World War II in 11 Crummock Street, Carlisle, to Nell and John Osgood. I was named Morris after my mother's father, Morris Walter Sweetman, who was buried in Britford Churchyard, just south of Salisbury. I attended Coldigate Primary School, a rather deprived area of Carlisle, but after success in the 11 plus exam, I moved to Carlisle Grammar School, one of 90 new boys. The grammar school was a very classical school. Greek, Latin and divinity were considered the most important. But during my time there, more scientific subjects, including biology, became more important. After the O-level Oxford exams, the chief maths teacher, Mr. Archer, pointed out a notice board letter offering a five-year management apprenticeship course at the Carlisle Tannery, J.T. Scott. I applied for this and had an interview with Elwood Scott, the managing director. He showed me round the tannery and I was really fascinated and excited about it and wanted the job. Fortunately, I was ac accepted and spent the whole of my working life in the leather industry. Coming to my first record, my interest in popular music at that time was firstly with skiffle, music groups about the same time as rock and roll. And Lonnie Donegan was one of the best. And the Rock Iron Line was the one that I've chosen. Great. So let's go on to play uh, Lonnie Donegan's Rock Island Line. Now this is the story about the Rock Island Line. Now the Rock Island Line is a railroad line and it runs down into New Orleans. 
And just outside of New Orleans is a, a big toll gate. You know all the trains that go through the toll gate, why, they gotta pay the man some money. Unless, of course, they got certain things on board, then they okay, and they don't ever have to pay the man nothing. And right now, we see a train, she's coming on down the line, and when she get up near to the toll gate, the, uh, the depot agent shout down to the driver, he want to know what he got on board, so he say, uh, What you got on board there, boy? And the driver, he sing right on back down to the depot agent, tell him what he got on board. Yeah, the way he sing. I got sheep, I got cows, I got horses, I got pigs, I got all the livestock, I got all the livestock, I got all the livestock. And the man say, well, he say, you all right then, boy, you don't have to pay me nothing, just get them on through. So the train go through the toll gate, and as it go through, he got up a little bit of steam and a, a little bit of speed. And when he's safely on the other side of the toll gate, the, the driver shout back down the line to the man. Of course, you don't care what he say now. Go on home and go on down the rock island line. She said, but I fooled you, I fooled you. I got pig iron, I got pig iron, I got all pig iron. He said, tell you I'm going, boy. Go on down the rock island line. Yes, yes, he's a mighty good road. Oh, well, the Rock Island Line, the she's a mighty good road. The Rock Island Line is the road to ride it. The Rock Island Line, she's a mighty good road. And if you want to ride, you got to ride it like a fine. You get your ticket at the station on the Rock Island Line. Well, I may be right, I may be wrong. I know you're going to miss me when I'm gone. Down the Rock Island Line, the she's a mighty good road. The Rock Island Line is the road to ride it. The Rock Island Line, she's a mighty good road. And if you want to ride, you got to ride it like a fine. You get your ticket at the station on the Rock Island Line. Cats in the cup of buddy don't see me I can tell, I want to say, oh, well, why, what was so great about Lonnie Donegan's Rock Island line? With Where did you hear it first? Oh, it must have been on the radio. It would be Radio Luxembourg, I would think, in those days. Did, you have, a, did you have a radio in the house then, A big that, that, that big wireless thing that you had? Or? Radiogram. Radiogram. So you didn't have a little mobile thing that you had under the sheets or something like that? No, oh, weren't invented then. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to subject you. Um, you the, first radio, and... the first radio we ever had had, had little uh, glass bottle batteries, which you had to take to the chemist shop to get charged oh, and bring oh. them back so, so that you could listen to the radio. It was just after the cat's whiskers were invented. <laughs> <laughs> So did so when you were listening to the radio? Did you did you have to negotiate with uh, with your dad and gran about what you listened to and when, or did you just dominate? Yeah. It, like I would have done in your house. No, we had to go. Well, uh, I, I would try and listen to things I wanted, but if they wanted a particular program, I would defer to them. Right. So, and then Lonnie Donegan, Rock Island Line, wasn't on that often. It was not like it's on every 10 minutes. So, oh. you must have come across it by accident. It was very popular at that time. Did you not buy any, uh, like, vinyl or records with it? Or? Uh, somewhere I should have that record, but I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you actually went out and bought it? It was a 45. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Island line was on one side. I can't remember what the other side was. So, and that, this was like when you'd already started at Scott's then when you were... No, no, it'd be before then. Right, still at school. Uh, yes, yes. Cool. So, following on from that, listening to the radio a lot, I was growing up with The Goon Show, with Spike Milligan, Harry Seacombe and Peter Sellers, with a very different humour and ability to take many characters in such an, an unusual way. This, this is where my mother and father disagreed with, with me listening to it. They thought they were, they were stupid. It's a bit like the modern day Monty Python. The second record comes from Peter Sellers album, Best of Sellers. And there's so many great impressions, it's difficult to single out one. But this is my choice. And it's suddenly it's folk. Three folk songs collected in hi-fi. The first one is from Somerset and has captured the spirit of the gay, happy farmer. It was recorded in the Brewer's Elbow, a local beer house. Ah. Ainar, would one fine morning I spy the lass there with a mapperty dalek in number dum die. She asked I the right way to Mackbottom Fair. Then I up and I showed her the way. Oh, I heard I heard I heard I heard I showed her the way. And I. Oh, yeah, that's the way. Oh, warn young maidens, beware of the fair. If you don't know the way, well, you'll find me right there. For the happiest time of my life, I dare say, I've had showing young maidens the way. Oh, yeah, 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 the second one is representative of the Scottish mouth music song on the mouth. I experienced some difficulty with extraneous noise on this recording. The singer Hamish McPukes only gave off his best when singing on the corner of Socky Hall Street in Glasgow. You may hear some traffic noise. Pay no attention. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was recorded posthumously. Finally, I would like you to listen to the sheer artistry of Pat O'Shaughnessy and his men of Shamrock. All right, lads, here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Lovely lads, that's lovely. Ah, uh, let it play from your hearts, lads. That's right. Uh, that's how I love to hear it, lads. That's how I love to hear it. <laughs> Pass a bottle, Paddy, will you? That's a drop of the heart stuff. I'll have a drop of the bar too, please. 
John, John, give me the bottle, will you? Right. <laughs> hey, say, that sounds like a, a bum note you was playing there, John. Don't tell me whether I'm playing a bum note or not. I won't take that talk from anyone, you... Oh, oh, take that, you... Oh, oh. Don't tell me where I am. I'll give you something to think about, you stupid idiot. I won't take that talk from nobody. Take that, you swine. Oh, 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 I won't have that talk from none of you, lad. I tell you. Oh, hey, look here, lads. Please, lads. The recording. The recording, lads. Careful of my microphone. My That's going to be very difficult to follow. So, for your next choice, Dad. In the third or fourth forms at the grammar school, I was introduced to the Lake District by the senior maths master, Geoffrey Archer, known as Dickie. He introduced me to fell walking in the Lake District, but later to the Highlands of Scotland, the Coolings of Skye and the Southern Uplands of Galloway. This love of high places and the beauty around them has remained and grown all my life. This choice of Sibelius has always been special and that it epitomizes the grandeur, the power of mountains, lakes and the high places. Sibelius' second symphony and the second movement.
My next record reminds me of a country discovered late in life, Australia. Now the Seekers were an Australian group. And although the next record is not Australian, the group was, and I have become very fond of them. In geography, it's a, a really wild life, flora, a really amazing. If I had known it at an early age, I feel sure I would have emigrated to Australia. This is the Seekers record, World of Our Own. And the bright city lights Let them all fade away Just leave us alone And we'll live in a world of our own We'll build a world of our own That no one else can share All our sorrows we'll leave far behind us there And I know you will find There'll be peace of mind The one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Quite, quite cool now because of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Living <absolutely. a> <laughs> <our own. laughs> Very applicable. Yeah, it's a world of our own. Yeah. Cool. Now, dur during my working life, I visited a lot of countries, especially Latin countries. They've opened my eyes to life that it's not just work, but food, wine, historic <laughs> places. <laughs> And this Concerto Rodriguez, the blind Spanish composer, epitomizes Iberia for me. I chose the second movement of this as being especially Spanish. <laughs>
So when did you come across this track then? Is that, where would you have been? In Portugal or South America or? Uh, probably on the radio or something, yeah. So um, what memories does that bring back then? It's being stuck on aeroplanes in grotty airports all over the world. No, it reminds me more of the countries that you pass through. You know, you can go 
France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, even Greece. There's, there's always something special about Latin countries. They, they work, but much more serious thing is, is eating and drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the great love of, uh, what was your nickname at Earnshaw's? Five Puds. Yes, yeah, something like that, yes. <laughs> Morris Five Puds, because you'd have five puddings. <laughs> well, that nicely brings, brings us on to the, the next part. In the 27 years I worked for Earnshaw's, every September, the Semaine de Queer was held in Paris. And I attended most, if not all. Many times, including Caroline, we went with Joan Betty Titmus and had tremendous fun and visited many places in northern France prior to the actual Semaine de Queer. This next record by a famous French singer of the past, Charles Trenet, recalls some of those times. <laughs> S'aimait depuis deux jours à peine Il y a parfois du bonheur dans la peine Mais depuis qu'ils étaient amoureux Leur destin n'était plus malheureux Ils vivaient avec un rêve étrange Et ce rêve était bleu comme les anges Leur amour était un vrai printemps, oui Aussi pur que leur tendre vingt ans C'est la romance de Paris Au coin des rues elle fleurit Ça met au cœur des amoureux Un peu de rêve et de ciel bleu Ce doux refrain de nos faubourgs Parle si gentiment d'amour Que tout le monde en était pris C'est la romance de Paris Que tout le monde en était pris C'est la romance de Paris La banlieue était leur vrai domaine Ils partaient à la fin de la semaine Dans les bois pour cueillir le muguet Ou sur un bateau pour naviguer Ils buvaient aussi dans les guinguettes Le vin blanc qui fait tourner la tête Et quand ils lui prenaient un baiser, oui Tous les couples en dansant se livraient Et la romance de Paris Au coin des rues, elle fleurit Ça met au cœur des amoureux Un peu de rêve et de ciel bleu Ce doux refrain de nos faubourgs Parle si gentiment d'amour Que tout le monde en était pris C'est la romance de Paris Que tout le monde en était pris C'est la romance de Paris C'est la romance de Paris But surely they didn't force you to listen to French music, because I guess it was on the radio in the car. Well, I, I used to uh, visit the south of France quite a bit on business. And that the, the, usually the agent and the technician I was with would have the French radio on the car. All and, right. Uh, that, that's probably where I started to hear it. In actual fact, the, the, the most famous one of his is called La Mer, which is on the other side of, of the disc that I've chosen. Oh, okay. Well, I know that one. That's the C. Yes. Um, so, but at that time, when you were traveling, is that when you started to learn a lot of languages? Because you speak pretty good yeah. French and Spanish and Portuguese. And well, you just had to pick it up in those days because uh, 
well, for example, I was I was sent to North Africa, to French-speaking countries like Senegal and Morocco, Tunisia occasionally, and not so many people spoke English, especially in the tanneries. And therefore, you, you just had to survive by having a go at speaking French. And also, I used to, when I got back to England, I used to go to evening classes. Right. Um, various places and, and took lessons in both both that and uh, Spanish as well. Right. And the only one I never really tried was was Italian, but now I find that I can understand quite a bit of Italian because it's very similar to either Spanish or, or Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, Latin based. Yeah. And yes, and of course in, in Portugal, um in the tanneries there, all the, all the workers, they, they only spoke Portuguese. So gradually, bit by bit, you, you picked it up and uh, prob probably not very good Portuguese, but everybody has always said that when I do speak, the accent is, is very correct. Yeah. So that's some compensation for the bad grammar and the naughty words. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I'm in the same boat now, Dad. So. <laughs> yeah. Great. Following this, more or less coming back to this country, the love of the British countryside has been with me for as long as I can remember. This piece by De Delius paints a picture, perhaps of a time that is gone, replaced by the hustle and bustle of modern life and business. But this is a time I like to remember anyway. So Delius's Brick Fair is my next choice.
So where does it take you in your brain? To the Lake District or? Back not to the Solway, I think. Okay. Solway Plain. I used to bike out at night after school or work. It was about uh, six or seven miles to Bruff Marsh. I used to go on my bike, the bike that I still have. <laughs> yeah. The rally. Which, which I bought for £29, 10 shillings <laughs> in 19, when would it be? 54, I think, Just with my first paycheck. From but Scott. I bought it for purchase. I think I paid 10 shillings a week, or maybe it was a month. <laughs> Fantastic. So were you on your own then, or did you go out with your mates to...? Usually I was on my own, yeah. And go walking or just...? Well, yeah, once, once you got out there, you had to you had to walk over the marshes because there's great big um, sort of little, little ditches with running water in, which, because it was tidal, they could, they could come up quickly and catch you oh, out. So yeah. it, you had to do a lot of jumping. Yeah. And of course, it's fa famous for waders around there. And also um, nesting birds like lapwing and curlew were always around. So you always got the, the haunting cry of the curlew. Mm. Is and that where your love of bird spotting comes from then, from going out there? Or? That, that came from earlier on, which... Uh, really leads me on to the next record. I started bird watching as a young lad, probably by listening to Uncle Mac on Children's Hour, which was the radio program about five o'clock tea time. And I bought the Observer's Book of British Birds, which incidentally I still have. Of course you do. And I, I remember <laughs> cycling out to Brough Marsh to see waders such as Lapwing, Red Shank Curlew, as well as a Skylark. And this piece by Vaughan Williams, The Lark Ascended, brings back those memories.
it's quite interesting that uh, I've, I've met up with my old school schoolboy chum, Derek Collins, and he he was telling me, and I didn't know this, that uh, he got interested in birds because I was interested in birds, and I must have led him on into it. Right. We, we used to go out together walking and. Of course, we started walking with Mr. Arter at the grammar school together, and we went on holidays in Scotland with, with him, and occasionally Peter Ross as well, another Crummock Street lad. Yeah. Oh, Peter. And then he goes, what, to the lakes as well on weekends? Yes, yeah. the lakes more, well, very often on Saturdays. Yeah. And then, and then later on, when I left school, we used to go on the Fell Walker bus on a Sunday, which left from uh, the Ribble bus station, and it went to either Buttermere or Seathwaite. And uh, we had the day to climb and then rush back about uh, four o'clock to get the bus back to Carlisle. <laughs> did you ever miss it? No, no, I don't think we ever did. No, but uh, it was a damn fine run thing sometimes. <laughs> Especially if you were rock climbing. Yeah, I'll bet. Marvellous. So he was responsible for your love of the lakes then, I guess. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened I mean, to him? Well, he, uh, he continued till he retired, but sadly he didn't live very long after he retired. He had uh, colon cancer and he died from that. Oh dear. I was working at Scott's at the time and I remember going to see him just before he died. It was very sad, probably in the 60s oh. when he died. Oh. But he, what, what, after he died, uh, his housekeeper, he was never married, he, he lived... Uh, up uh, Blackwell, Blackwell Road on the way out to Bruff. And his housekeepers told me afterwards that uh, he said I could, after he died, that I could go up and select a book from amongst his collection of books. And I have that book today, which is uh, the Towns of the Lake District. All right. Paintings in it by Eaton Cooper, very famous. Uh, watercolour painter of Lake District scenes. Great. That's really nice. Nice story. Is that your selection, Dad? That is my selection, which I found extremely difficult to restrict. <laughs> yeah, because can... <clears throat> there are tons more that I'd like to have put in, but uh, I thought the, these were a wider selection of Varying types, otherwise, there'd have been a lot more classical music in it. The only one that I, I probably should have put in was the one about the sun has got his hat on. You mean, I, um... And he's coming out today Now we'll all be happy Hip, 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 hooray The sun has got his hat on And he's coming out today He's been tanning niggers Out in Timbuktu Now he's coming back To do the same to you So jump into your sunbath Hip, 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 hooray The sun has got his hat on And he's coming out today All the little birds are singing all the little gnats are stinging All the little bees in twos and threes Buzzing in the sun all day Hip, 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 hooray 
Excited, all the little girls delighted. What a lot of fun for everyone sitting in the sun all day. to sing this one to you while you were small. I, I remember it very well. I'm a more North Allerton. Yes, that's synonymous with uh, the early days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Yes. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, I also, I didn't choose my wife's signature tune. <laughs> Sweet Caroline. All right. <laughs> No, that's her choice, maybe. Uh, so I have to, we have to sort of finish this with uh, when you're on your desert island, you have to, you get to choose um, a book to take with you. A book to take with me? Again, yeah. Very difficult, but I think the one I would like to take is called A Journey to Portugal by Jose Saramago, who was... Uh, awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. Um, it's a book translated into English and it, it, it's a very good read. It's about him coming back. I think he was probably living in France and he came back to Portugal and wrote this book about different places because he obviously entered by road rather than by plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a book that I've read two or three times, and I, I can always go back to it and find something interesting in it. Excellent. So that will go with the uh, the Bible and the complete works of Shakespeare that you're allowed to take as well. And, yes. Yeah. And then you're allowed one luxury item. So what well, will that be? The luxury item, I don't know how you get it there, but it will be a battle of, of port. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I'm sure. And what, you'd have to keep it um, cooled nicely, so you'd have to dig a hole of it with water. And, yes. Well, I mean, you can drink port at, at ambient temperatures, so that wouldn't be a problem for me. <laughs> uh, brilliant. That's, I'm sure that, uh, that can be arranged quite easily. <laughs> don't know how old. I don't think it'll be like the one we got you for your 80th. No, I was thinking about that. If you'd, been, <laughs> if you'd been here for Christmas, I would have opened it, but I'll, I'll hold, it, hold it back for another year. Well, I've think, got other and drink. <clears throat> was, wasn't the plan to save it for the, uh, the wedding anniversary, the big 60th next year? Well, I, could, I might do that, yes. <laughs> we don't want too many people around to share it, though, do we? The trouble, there's only six glasses in it. <laughs> I will do it on the sly sometime, Dad. <laughs> so, from all of those records, you have to pretend so the um, so the desert island discs thing go that the waves are waves are getting higher, and you can only save one of them. So, out of all of the, your choices of records, which would be the one that you would choose to save? Oh gosh, that's difficult. Um... <laughs> I think it's be either the Lark Ascending or the Sibelius. Um, Definitely the classical uh, 
songs that you go for? I think so, yes, yes. Always because they, they last longer. <laughs> uh, some tightness in there somewhere, legendary. Yes, yes. <laughs> you get more bang for your buck out of a yes. classical 15-minute record. Well, that's I brilliant. Think the, the lark ascending, probably, because it's got the sound of the birds on it. And you might get a bit bored if you're on a, a desert island because the birds would be uh, not not nesting on there, probably. They would be flying past or uh, migrating past. So at least I would be able to hear a bit of bird song. That's very true. That's very true. That's wonderful. All right, Dan. Well, I think we've done all right there. I think that's great. So uh, thank you very much for the... Desert Island this. Thank you.